Hi everyone, so if you watched last week's video on the channel, that was on the Volkswagen Up. If you haven't, go back and watch it. I have plenty of nice comments from all of you, thank you very much. Uh, but that car's pretty much finished now um, in that video. So the last things I need to do this week for that car is uh, service, tracking and MOT, then the car is finished. But in the meantime, I thought it's about time to get a new rebuild project on the channel. So you can probably see what it is on the thumbnail, but let's get straight on to the cinematics. So finally, the next rebuild project is now on the channel. Let us know in the comments what you think, guys. I've had this car around about two months now. I bought it from Newbury Copart. Uh, but yeah, it's just been waiting patiently as I wanted to get the up finished first. That's pretty much done now. So that's why I'm now featuring this on the channel so we can crack on with it. Yeah, so if you see any other cars in the background, that's not me hiding the next project car. They're not mine. I only rent two spaces in this unit, just to let you guys know. So whatever car I'm working on will obviously be inside, and the next rebuild project will be patiently waiting outside. So this one's a 2017 on a 67 plate Audi A1 S line. Being a 2017 vehicle, it is a facelift model, and this one's got a 1.4 TFSI petrol engine with a six-speed manual gearbox. It's a Category S vehicle. Unfortunately, it didn't come with any paperwork but I have got two keys. I would unlock the car, but the battery is fully flat, which I'll show you. I'll put a jump pack on later into the video. But yeah, as it didn't come with any paperwork, I contacted Audi and it has got full history, which is great news. So I'll get a print out of that done, uh, ready for when the car's finished. And I will also buy the owner's manuals for this car. You can buy them secondhand on eBay for about 20, 25 pounds, just so that's ready for when it's finished. So luckily the damage is just one area on this Audi A1 as the Volkswagen app I just repaired. If you remember that was passenger front corner why it got written off. But it also damaged the passenger front door which I could clearly see on the Copart photos. But the rear door on the up, the rear quarter and rear bumper, I couldn't really see on the Copart photos. Being a red car, so basically I had the whole front, the whole side, the rear bumper, that did rack up on the price of the paint. But oh well that is a lovely car though but yeah this one obviously front passenger corner the dashboard and the airbags have gone off when i say airbags steering wheel and dashboard two seat belts but i'm happy because i do enjoy doing bear me a second i do enjoy doing dashboards as even today i still get regular comments on the skoda fabio videos on the dashboards and the volkswagen up people thanking me because I normally do like a how-to video when I'm doing the airbags like showing you where all the bolts are or how to reset the airbag module or power steering some of these smaller VAG cars the electric power steering gets turned off when the airbags are deployed you have to reset etc if that is the case with this one I will also show on the video how to do the job the reason I say if that is the case with this one let me get a jump pack on the battery, as this battery is fully dead on this one. Now the jump pack's connected, I do have power to the car, as you can see. So I'll just show you now. And you'll see as well if the camera focuses. 45,000 miles. Bear me a second, I'll just get the key in ignition. Make sure that radio don't come on. Uh, have a listen to this, guys. Just cranks. 
just to let you know as well, before I even attempted to start this vehicle, when I first got the car, I did check the fluids. As you can see, the anti it's got plenty of antifreeze, and I'll just attempt to show you one-handed. It's nice to see a dipstick. Most newer cars, it's all by the digital display. As you can see, plenty of oil on there. Right, the reason it is not starting, I'll show you now. As you know, it's passenger front corner damage. Broken wires, if you can see here. So let me plug in the diagnostics and I'll show you exactly what's happening. So I've now got the diagnostics plugged into the car. If you can see the dongle in the OBD port. So what I'll do, I'll click Audi, click OK. It's just gonna communicate to the dongle. So I'm gonna go through the fault codes with yourselves. This is just for the engine. If you can see here, all these fault codes says, for example, open circuit, and obviously it's active. It's not like a pass fault code that if you had a, let's say a dead battery, for example. These are all active codes, and pretty much all of them says open circuit. And as I've just shown you, there is broken wires. So for example, the camshaft sensor, open circuit, I know it's plugged in on the actual top of the engine. So one of those wires that are broken is gonna be one of the wires that goes to the camshaft sensor. So obviously when you're cranking it, the, the camshaft sensor, obviously there's no signal, so the crank sensor is not picking up the camshaft sensor. So that's why it has these fault codes because of the broken wires. What else we got? Uh, low voltage. front obviously the headlight alarm horn that could be one of the broken wires supply voltage voltage that's obviously the battery's low on the airbags we've got obviously the steering wheel airbag passenger dashboard and the two front seat belts what else have we got here voltage again because low battery resistance too high that's the outside temperature sensor that could be battery or it might be broken we'll soon find out when we actually strip this car again supply voltage so if this car was running the power steering would not be working because this car does have electric power steering and as you can see this is module 44 which i've shown on the volkswagen ups and the skoda fabius the p160900 fault code so when the airbags get deployed on this type of vehicle, the power steering automatically gets turned off. It's not just a, a thing of like clearing the fault codes and it'll work again. No, you have to do a procedure, which I will show you when I do the airbags. Just see what else there is. That's it then. I'll just see what actually goes, obviously from low battery voltage. So now I've attempted to clear the fault codes. These are the codes I have left. So we've still got the five on the engine. Uh, on the cluster control module, which that could be linked with the airbags or the power steering. Two for the headlight, four for the airbags, one for the temperature sensor outside, and the module 44, the uh, obviously this power steering. So that leaves us with 14, I know it's a lot, 14 fault codes, but you think just for the airbags, well, obviously the seat belts, that's four. Obviously we've got five in the engine bay. I would say 100% because of the broken wires, but we'll soon find out when we strip down the car. Obviously I need to repair all those wires. But yeah, at least we know what fault codes I have now. Now I'm finished doing the diagnostics and I'm inside the car, I might as well show you guys the rest of the interior. So I would say this car was looked after very much, obviously apart from the accident, but I do hope the previous owner is all well. But yeah, it's a very nice, tidy interior on this one. Luckily there was no food or anything left in there, as some cars, obviously they get left in the auction yards for a few months until they go live for auction to obviously bid on the cars. And obviously if there's food left, it goes mouldy and the interior then stinks, for example. 
but no, it's a nice tidy car and smells very nice. Being an S-Line, that's just a seat clicking into position. Being an S-Line, this is half leather uh, with the S-Line embroidered onto the back of the seats. Half perforated leather steering wheel and the bottom and top is normal leather with the S-Line on the bottom of the steering wheel. It's not a flat bottom, this one. It is a round steering wheel. Uh, steering wheel controls, cruise control. It does have AC, but I can't tell if it's cold or if it's working as currently this car is a non-runner. It's got Audi Drive Select. I think this one is just for the throttle. As some Audis, you can have the suspension as well where it stiffens up the dampeners, but I think this one is just for the throttle response, etc. Uh, stop start, the screen you can either have up or down. That's just manually operated. Being an S-Line, it's got a black headliner as well. I think that's about it for the interior. Uh, if I didn't say it's got rear parking sensors as well, and obviously that's the entertainment system. Just before I walk around the exterior of the car, I'll just show you inside the boot. So it's got the partial shelf. The reason I say it's got the partial shelf, because it's a hit or miss if the cars come with a partial shelf and floor mats for some reason when you buy these salvage cars. As you can see, it's still got the genuine Audi floor mats. So the boot floor, it's a two stage one. So that's on the highest setting, and you can drop it all the way down, just like that. Uh, this one don't have a spare wheel, but it has the tyre goo, uh, the pump. They're quite decent pumps, to be honest. Um, obviously, the first aid kit, locking wheel nut key's just there, and a litre of oil in here. Yeah, so it's got the full tool kit, and as you can see, nice tidy boot. So we'll start from the back. Um, being an S-Line, comes with a nice spoiler on the back. Uh, obviously, you might have seen on the cinematics, it's got the LED rear tail lights that look really nice. No rear camera on this one, unfortunately. It's got LED uh, number plate lights from standard. Uh, the twin exhaust pipe with the S-Line rear diffuser and parking sensors. As you can see, no scuffs or marks on the back bumper. Honestly, it's a really nice, tidy example apart from the damage, but it will soon be looking very nice again. Uh, all the wheels, no curb marks, brilliant tyres. These are 17 inch on this one. And you'll see, apart from the damage on the front passenger corner and the wing mirror, which I'll show you in a second, there is no scratches, dents or dings. It is a very nice, tidy example. Yeah, this is what I mean on the wing mirror. It's got a scrape here, you can hear it with my nail. So that'll need painting. Obviously that won't buff because it's gone through the paint. Passenger front wheel, all nice and clean again. No curb marks, tyres all good. We'll get to that corner last. So I'll just come to the driver's side. Driver's headlight is all good. Fog light's all good. And the fog light grill, that saves me a bit of money. Driver's front wheel, yet again, no curb marks. The tyres all good. Driver's wing is perfect, not a mark on it. Same with the driver's mirror, driver's door and rear quarter. So like you can see, the paintwork is a very good condition on this car. And the last wheel, no curb marks, very good tire. Just one last thing before I show you the, the damage of the vehicle. These lights are not really doing justice on the color of this car. This The, the color of this car is what sold it to me. As soon as I see this car and the color, I thought, you know, I've got to have this one. Uh, I'll show you the Copart photo because natural light, this is when this color pops. So you'll see what I'm trying to say. As you've seen on the Copart photo, when it's in natural daylight, this color is very nice. So this color is called Nano Gray. Personally, I would say it's the next shade after Nardo Gray. So it's a very nice color and it's got a lot of metallic in it. I don't know if you're gonna pick it up on camera, probably, there you go, on the bonnet. Yeah, it's a very nice car in natural daylight. So now on to the damage. So as you can see, the bonnet has seen better days. It's got damage on the outside and on the inner skin. So this bonnet is ready for the bin. Uh, so I'll be getting a replacement bonnet Unfortunately, the front panel has been damaged as well. 
as you can see, it is split just here and further back. Uh, from what I've, obviously I've not struck this car yet, and I am filming this on the 9th of May. What's the day after bank holiday? Well, this is night time because I'm not working tonight because I work permanent nights because uh, of bank holiday, I'm not working. So yeah. But yeah, what I was getting at, as you can see, it is holding antifreeze which means there isn't a hole in the rad, but that doesn't mean the rad is not damaged. It could be bent, which means obviously I'll have to replace, but we'll see when I strip down the car. Yeah, so the front panel needs replacing. The headlight, there is nothing pretty much left of the headlight. The front grille is also damaged. Bumper, fog light is gone. Uh, fog light grille is gone as well. The wing is damaged, so it's cold over just here. It's bowed out, it's split on the inner part. The arch liner is also damaged. But on these, the arch liners are not dear. So the Volkswagen up genuine one from obviously TPS, but a genuine item, I think they're 50 pound. But on these, they're like 30, same with the A3. I think they're about 35 brand new when eBay like 80 pound second hand. So yeah, that'll be a genuine. All the front, all the panels on this exterior, Apart from the grill, which I already got one, like you know, I've had this car two months already, so I have started getting parts. I've already got a dashboard kit. I've got the grill. Uh, that was second hand. I've got that like, a marketplace, uh, but in good condition. I've got a crash bar from Silver Lake, but the front panel, the bumper, fog light grill, the wing, obviously the bonnet, I will be getting genuine brand new items. Just for an example, the bonnet, there's some second-hand ones on eBay, £250, with damage either similar to this or not as bad. Yeah, for £250, so you've got to pay to get repaired and then paint. When a genuine brand new item, I'm, price I'm telling you now is retail, obviously I get a discount, but retail price is £380 for a bonnet, so it's a no-brainer. Lease then, genuine brand new item, no filler, just paint. So now on to the reason why this car is a category s and why the car is a non-runner also i've never done an audi a1 before i understand they're they are a fabia or a polo platform but i will be buying an audi workshop manual from easymanuals.co.uk 15 pound for a, a pdf file what you can download onto your device like a phone laptop etc reason i'm doing that because if you can see here the crash bar has been touched it's um just bowed over here so the end plate of the chassis leg if you can just see on this angle so if that can't be straightened from the body shop i will get a replacement i've already got a price 17 pound uh, you just drill the uh, spot welds out of the end of the leg and replace the end cap so it's not too much of a job uh, but yeah if you can see this area just here where it's curled over that is part of the top lid of the uh, chassis leg. So the sides of the leg, which is a big job, is all straight from what I can visually see without stripping down the car. So both sides, I can't really show you the engine bay one as there's no room. But um, obviously I'll show you when I strip down the car. Uh, the battery tray is not damaged and the battery is nice and secure. All, all the rest of the accessories like the abs pump and everything fuse box nothing's being touched in that area and same as the uh top apron but yeah the top lid has got some damage on top which luckily is another item that you can replace this uh which i've already got a price from audi i think it was 70 pounds so i will be leaving that job for the we'll look at it closer when i strip down the car but this job i will leave to the body shop you know professionally done and um, the reason the car is a non-runner if you can see broken wires so i've got some wire wiring job to do on this one but yeah let us know what you think to the car guys one thing i forgot to show you guys uh so the bonnet it still lines up really nice it still opens and closes. as thing i want to show you on the damage of the vehicle the main thing is it hasn't touched the A post, hasn't touched the door either side, which is another good thing, as you can see. So this one's not going to be months and months to rebuild. Uh, as you know, I am filming this. Uh, well, it was, it was, I um, can't think. 
It was bank holiday. Obviously, now it's Tuesday, what, the 9th, I think? 9th of May? But, yeah. So, this weekend, I'm not, obviously, I work permanent nights. So I'm a, oh, sorry, a test on the railway. Um, I'm not rostered in this weekend, which means I'm doing things backwards. Normally, the second video on the rebuild is stripping down all the damage. No. The second video on this one, I will be doing the interior. Because i got the dashboard kit already, I just want to get the interior over and done with. And then the reason I haven't got all the panels for this one is because I, I'm getting them all genuine brand new. I can get them next day, which means I don't need them taking up all space like today. Because when, once I've stripped it down, I can place all the big order and have them tomorrow, if you know what I'm trying to say. So apart from saving space, as I can get the panels next day from TPS, the second reason why I haven't bought the panels already, as I've had the car two months, is... Obviously, I don't mind using second-hand original panels if they're in good condition. I don't want banged-up stuff, full of filler, etc. Um, obviously, the bonnet and the wing is the same as a pre-facelift, but the bumper is facelift only. So I've been looking everywhere. Uh, as you know, I have the front crash bar from Silver Lake. I asked if they had any panels front ends there. But um, if I remember rightly, the... Y A L D A one that Chris and Rob rebuilt, Salvage Re Rebuilds UK, they actually bought the front end from Silver Lake. So I don't mind buying second and original items, but obviously if they're in good condition. If they're all banged up and needs loads of filler or etc., I won't even bother, just genuine brand new items. That's why I've waited. Obviously we'll do the interior first and then we'll strip down the exterior. Once that's stripped down, I'll, I can then see every little part I need and then I could just order it with TPS. As long as it's before two o'clock, the cutoff time on a weekday, I can get it next day, as long as it's not back order, which that word I don't want to hear. <laughs> but um, yeah, I've got a very busy week this week. I've got, uh, obviously I'm filming this now on, um, well, it was bank holiday. As you know, I wasn't working tonight, so I thought I'd come here and film the reveal video. As I'm not rostered this weekend, I'm going to do the um, dashboard kit. But yeah, this, apart from that, this week I've got um, the Volkswagen up to finish. Obviously the service, the tracking and the detailing. So that's an end for today's video. Let us know in the comments what you think is a new rebuild project for the channel. And also, if you did like today's video, smash that like button as it really does help with the YouTube algorithm for the channel. As we, I think we're now, what, just over 4,500 subscribers, which I appreciate all of you that have subscribed. And if you're not subscribed, please consider subscribing. Also click the bell icon so you get a notification when I put a new upload. So this weekend, I'll be filming the, doing the whole interior, the dashboard, the steering wheel airbags, seat belts, etc. And also I'm filming this week, the last video on the up. So there'll be 100% a new video on the channel next week. I'm gonna start trying my best to um, regular upload. But yeah, appreciate you guys for watching. And if you do need to DM me or anything, it's uh, Nathan underscore Hiley on Instagram or the email is Nathan underscore Hiley at Outlook.com. Appreciate you guys for watching and I will see you next week with a new video, either this or the last video on the up.